Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everybody. Welcome to PMC 500 Statistical Reasoning in Education. So today I'm going to explain to all of you regarding reliability analysis. I am Dr. Nur Asniza Isha or you can call me Dr. Ija. So before we move on to what does it mean by a reliability analysis, let me explain to all of you with what is pilot study. So a pilot study is a small scale research where it carried out before the real research uh, being carried out or it, can, it, it will be carried out before the real research. So what would be the purpose of we carrying out the pilot study? Of course, first of all, to, um, to observe yeah, the management of our items, okay? And to obtain and increase the internal consistency of a research study or measuring test. So reliability, so what is actually reliability? So reliability in statistics refer to the overall consistency of a measure. You know that when you distribute an instrument, you have an items in your instrument. So in reliability, what we need to find is whether the items have internal consistency between one another. So a measure is said to have a high reliability if it produces similar result under consistent condition. For a quantitative research, a process of reliability is essential in order for you to find out the internal consistency of the items for the instrument that you use for your research. So in order to find the reliability in a quantitative research, you can do a pre-post approach and also another approach called the internal consistency approach. So the internal consistency approach is meant to find the correlation between the score of an item in a test uh, with the total score for the all for the whole items in the test. If the value of the correlation for the items is high, therefore it it's uh, it contain high liability or it have a high reliability. And if the value of the correlation among items show a low score, it show that or it indicate that it have a low reliability. Okay, one way of finding the reliability is by measuring the alpha chromba or the chromba alpha value for reliability. So let me introduce more or let me explain more on what is actually internal consistency reliability. In statistics and research, internal consistency is typically a measure based on the correlation between different items on the same test or the same subscale on a larger test. So it means that we're going to look at the correlation between one item with another item between the same test or the same subscale or largest test. It measured whether several items that propose to measure the same general construct, construct produce similar score. That's why we want the internal consistency to be um, higher so that it measures. Yeah? So the items measures the same general const construct and produce similar scores. For example, if a respondent expressed agreement with the statement, I like to ride bicycle and I have enjoyed riding bicycle in the past and a disagreement with the statement, I hate bicycle. This would be indicative of good internal consistency of the test. Right, in this slide, I'm going to show you the rule of thumb for measuring the internal consistency of a reliability. So internal consistency is usually measured with Kronbach Alpha, a statistics that calculated from the pairwise correlation between an items. And internal consistency ranges between negative value, infinity and one. A commonly accepted rule of thumb for describing internal consistency is as follows. 
So if you look at this table, if the value of Cronbach alpha, which we use symbol alpha here, is less than 0 0.5, it indicates that the internal consistency is unacceptable. If the value of Cronbach alpha is between 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, it is, it is it's having a poor internal consistency. If the value in a range of between 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, it is questionable. And if the Cronbach alpha value is between 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, it is acceptable. And if the value in range of 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, it means that the internal consistency is good. And if the Cronbach alpha value is more than 0 0.9, it shows that the internal consistency is excellent. So basically, when you run a research and you run a pilot study, you need to find the internal consistency of the reliability using Cronbach Alpha if it involves a scale item. And what you want for the value is that it should be more than 0 0.7 so that it is acceptable, good or excellent for the internal consistency. So what would be the procedure to get the Cromba Alpha value using SPSS. So of course, first things that you need to do is to insert a data in an SPSS, and then you click Analyze, then go to Skill, and choose Reliability Analysis. And what you need to do next is to choose items and drag the items into the items box. Click Model, and choose Alpha. And after that, it will open a dialog of reliability analysis statistics. So you click statistic and open the reliability analysis dialog. Then what you need to do is choose scale and scale if item deleted. And after that, you just continue and click OK. So why is it important for us to choose scale if item deleted? It means that we can identify from the output which items are the most problematic items and what happened to the value of the chroma alpha if that particular item will be deleted. So usually from the output of the, um, of the chroma alpha, if, the, uh, if you're referring to the scale if item deleted um, analysis, it shows that the problematic items and what will happen to the Chromba Alpha value if you delete that particular item. So thank you very much and I hope that you can try how to get a reliability analysis or how to do a reliability analysis using Chromba Alpha measurement in your SPSS. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.